And your name? I'm Dr. Margaret Flowers. And Dr. Flowers, we're up here in Columbia, Maryland today. What's going on? This is a very exciting day for us. This is our public launch of the Healthcare is a Human Right campaign in Maryland. Um, this is something that's been two years in the works to get to this point. We were very inspired by what the Vermont Workers Center and the other single payer groups did up there. So um, we're building this campaign to create a grassroots swell that demands single payer in the state of Maryland as well as the other things we need for our health. And who's supporting this? I, I saw some names on, on the press release. Right, this was started by the um, Maryland Chapter of Healthcare Now the Maryland chapter of Physicians for a National Health Program and United Workers. But it's really something that is going to come from the people. We have chapters and new chapters in a number of different counties that are organizing and it's it's an open campaign. We want people to get in and get involved and help shape it. And what's the objective for the benefit of our audience? There's something called Obamacare. Right. And how does what you want compare to that? Well, Obamacare takes us in the opposite direction from where we really need to go if we want to provide high quality health care to every person and control our health care costs. We can best do that through what's called a single payer health system or you can think of it as taking the traditional original Medicare before it got privatized and messed up and giving that to everyone. So you pay in through your taxes, you have it for your entire life, you can go to any medical facility and you're paying up front. You don't have to worry about co-pays and deductibles when you get there. What the Affordable Care Act does is it forces people to purchase more private insurance. It puts more of our public dollars into the private insurance corporation's hands, which they're already using to lobby, to weaken the requirements. They don't have to cover as much so that they can charge more. Um, so it's just, it's, it's moving us in further privatization of our health care and that doesn't create a, a human rights-based system. Now the single payer system got some support in the Congress last time. I, I think it died in committee. Well, it's, there has been a, a continues to be each year a single payer bill um, it, at the federal level, HR six seven six, and um, that you know people sign on to it. But if we want to really make that happen, it's going to have to come from us demanding that they put us through us. Like anything that that's good for the people in Congress, it only comes when people demand it. Okay, the state has 23 counties. How many of them are you already have people on the we ground? We have seven uh, right now that are organized and meeting regularly and growing, and that's before we even started the public launch. Some of those started um, very organically. We hadn't even targeted those counties, and they approached us and wanted to start meeting. So that's really exciting. So we have a full-time organizer. And what's his name? His name is Sergio Espana. And he's wonderful and very energetic and very together. And so he, you know, he can only do so much. As soon as these get a little, you know, more confident, he'll be going out to the other counties. And of course, if people are interested, they should contact us. Our website is very easy. Healthcare is a human right, Maryland.org, all spelled out. Anything else, Dr. Flowers? Just, um, I think this is a very exciting time. Um, and. We are building this grassroots momentum to make real change in the state of Maryland, and I hope that people will get involved and join us. Thanks so much. Thank you. And your name? Donna Smith, and I'm from Laurel, Maryland. And Donna, what's your involvement in the single-payer system? Well, I'm a big proponent of a Medicare for All expanded and improved system, single-payer for everybody. I believe everybody should have access to health care without financial barrier one single standard of care for everyone. Right now I work for National Nurses United, but I also was one of the fe featured in Michael Moore's 2007 documentary film, Sicko, that told the story of about a dozen American families who, with insurance, still ended up without access to care and having horrible medical bills that we couldn't pay. So I've always believed that this is just a human right. Healthcare is one of those rights that you should grant to one another without question. It should be a decision between doctors and nurses and the patients and what kind of care is delivered. It shouldn't be the insurance companies that decide just this year. I've had another round of uh, treatment for cancer issues, and I fought with Aetna the entire year. Every single step of the way I had a fight with Aetna. It was enough to be worried and concerned about cancer without adding the loop of fighting Aetna into it. And so I'm hoping that here in Maryland as we launch this campaign, we're going to be able to teach one another that there truly is a different way, and we can make that happen. I'm so glad to see everyone here today. Now, you know it's going to be a hard fight, especially when you see what happened to labor in Michigan. Absolutely. Now, maybe that could be a wake-up call. I mean, I the working class really, you know, they need somebody to give them a little kick. 
Absolutely. I think the nurses, fortunately, have been doing that for a while. We haven't been taking no for an answer in a lot of settings. You know, in California, the nurses fought and obtained safe staffing ratios, the only state in the country that has that because the nurses fought for that so that there'd be enough nurses for each patient in the hospital because, you know, for-profit hospitals will cut staffing if they can to save dollars and patients will have trouble getting the kind of care that they need. And when Governor Schwarzenegger tried to take a lick at that, the nurses followed him for a year. 118 stops they followed him to make sure he understood that they were serious about protecting them what they had won in California. So I think what we saw just play out in Michigan with right to work uh, legislation being slammed through a lame duck, people have got to take a look and say this is no longer about Republican or Democrat, this is no longer about um, any kind of political differences, this is about a class difference between those who have exorbitant amounts of money and are greedy and just want more and the rest of us. Like the 2% they call it or the 1%. Absolutely, whatever percentage you'd like to give yeah. it. We know who we are. We know which class we fall in. Those of us who worry about paying the bills and those who never have a thought about it are different different kinds of people. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people who don't mind stepping on others to get what they want in their lives. And I'm not about that. I know the people in Maryland, most of the people in Maryland are good and decent human beings. They want the best for one another and their neighbors. And we have to stand up to this and say, it's enough. It's enough. We want, want, enough. We want health care for each other. We want basic rights for each other and we're going to fight together. Anything else, Tana? I think that's it. Thank you very much. Are you much. from California? No. I was born and raised in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Donna. Absolutely. Something is wrong when we're okay spending over $10 billion on elective cosmetic procedures while people die without access to necessary ones. Something's wrong when we're willing to let people go without needed medication because they can't afford it, as we just heard from one of our earlier speakers. Something's wrong when we're willing to let people suffer or die because of a misguided notion that they must have done something wrong or they didn't work hard enough if they can't afford a doctor. Something's wrong when we have the highest infant mortality rate of industrialized nations, even though we have the highest rates of health care expenditures. Something's wrong when we argue that our money shouldn't go to heal the undeserving, or that our doctors won't get paid as much or we'll have to wait a long time for our non-essential procedure as a justification for why our tax dollars shouldn't cover medical expenses for everybody. It's not fair that access to health care is based on income. It's not equitable. Health care is a human right, right, as we know. It's not a luxury item, but in the United States, we treat it the same way we treat a car or we treat owning access to a boat or something like that. It's only for those who, have, who can afford it. But maintaining our health shouldn't be a luxury. Not only is it fair to distribute medical care according to need instead of profit, it's essential for a healthy society. In the Declaration of Independence, it says that people are predisposed to suffer through wrongs they're accustomed to rather than to fix them. And then it continues and it says, but it's our civic duty to address those wrongs and insist on change to secure the future. So now is the time for us to insist that our government make a change to how we care for the residents of Maryland. And it's funny because just before coming here, I was at an event for um, equity in education. And one of the speakers there said that equity in education isn't going to come from the top down, it's going to come from the bottom up. And so the same is the case here. That it's our duty to ensure equitable access to quality health care for everyone, and we can do it if we all work to mobilize our communities to help empower our friends and neighbors to shape this movement for a single-payer health care system. Thank you.